Parshas Bahaloscha, the Aliyah of Shishi. This Aliyah is packed full of drama, many famous psukim in this Aliyah. And we begin really with perhaps the most famous Pasuk, Vayihi bin Soa Ha'aron. And as we know, this is the Pasuk that we say uh, each and every time that we open up the Aron Kodesh to remove the Sefer Torah to read it. We say this Pasuk of Vayihi bin Soa Ha'aron, <coughs> Vayomer Moshe. And what exactly are we saying? Let's understand it. What exactly are we saying? So Vayibin Tzoha HaAron, when the Aron traveled, Vayomer Moshe, Moshe said as follows, Kuma Hashem Vayafutsu Aivecha, that Hashem, you should get up, and all of your enemies should scatter. Vyanusu Misanecha Mipanecha, and all of those who are your foes, all of those who hate you, should run, should flee from before you. Vunucho Yomar, and this we say when we return the Sefer Torah to the Aron, that when the Aron would rest, when the Aron would rest, then we would say, then Moshe would say, Shuva Hashem, Rivavos, Alpha Yisrael, and he would say, reside tranquilly, Hashem, among the myriad thousands of B'nai Yisrael. So we're talking about the fact that Hashem's enemies should be scattered and we're talking about the fact that Hashem should dwell within us and rest within us. These are perhaps the most uh, famous psukim in Shishi. But then Shishi continues with tremendous drama. People in B'nai Yisrael, some of the people in B'nai Yisrael begin complaining about the uncertainty of traveling through the Midbar. How are they going to have what they need? Who's going to protect them? Who's going to guide them? Hashem punished these people for complaining. There's a question in the Mefarshim, did Hashem punish the elders, that Hashem punished the Erev Rav, which was that group from Mitzrayim that was supposedly going to convert and uh, caused a lot of problems for the Jewish people. <clears throat> Hashem punished them. The people cried out to Moshe. Moshe davened, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu stopped the punishment. This punishment, in this case, was fire. HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought fire to punish those who had complained. And this place was named Kivros. I'm sorry. This place was named Tavera. Then the people complained about the lack of meat, the lack of food. They remembered the wonderful foods that they ate in Mitzrayim, famous Pasuk. We remember the fish that we ate in Mitzrayim. We remember the Kishuim and all of the delicious vegetables, all of the things that we ate in Mitzrayim. We remember the meat and now we're left in the desert and all we have is the man. That's all we have. The Torah then describes the man. The man, as we know, it took on all sorts of forms. It could be ground, it could be cooked, it could be baked. The Torah says it tasted like dough with oil, tasted delicious. And we know it descended with the dew, with the tal, each and every morning. <clears throat> Moshe heard these people complaining about their food, and Moshe was disappointed. But Hashem was angry. Moshe then complained to Hashem about the burden of B'nai Yisrael, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Why did you cause these problems for me? Moshe says, I can't do this myself. He complains about the burden. He says, I can't do it myself. Hashem tells Moshe, Moshe, you're right. You can't do it yourself. So bring 70 elders to Oel Moed and we're going to establish a Sanhedrin. I'm going to come, rest my presence among them and they will share the burden of B'nai Yisrael with you. <clears throat> Hashem then says that these people that complained about the meat, I'm going to give them meat. Not for a short while, for 30 days straight. I'm going to give them meat to the point where they become nauseous. Moshe then asks, how, is, how am I going to get all this meat? For 600,000 Jews? For 30 days? Where am I going to get this kind of meat? We're in the desert here. Kosh Baruch Hu replies, don't worry, I can take care of it. And Hashem of course can. Moshe brings these 70 elders, these 70 men, the spirit of Hashem descends upon them and they all become prophets. According to most Mepharshim, they only prophecy once, uh, but they do become prophets. Now Moshe had to select six from each Shevet, <clears throat> 70, and there were 12 Shvatim, he had to select six from each Shevet, but then there would be an extra 72. So Chazal, tell, I'm sorry, there would be an extra two. Then Chazal tell us that they drew lots. And whoever drew the lots that had a blank on them, they were the two that were not going to be part of the Sanhedrin. <clears throat> there was a, 
There were two individuals by the name of Eldad and Medad. They did not come and join the 70 who were drawing lots. Some say because they were very humble. They didn't feel that they were worthy of being part of the Sanhedrin. And others say they were embarrassed. They didn't want to draw those lots that had the blank and, uh, and, and not be, not merit to be part of the Sanhedrin. They ended up being members of the Sanhedrin because others drew those two lots, but Eldad and Medad did not join. They remained back in the camp. While they were in the camp, they also got that prophecy when HaKadosh Baruch Hu came down and His presence rested among these people. The Gemara says that their prophecy was that Moshe will die and Yahushua will take over and bring Bnei Yisrael into Eretz Yisrael. Yahushua is very upset by this. And he runs to Moshe and he says, Moshe, aim. we have to imprison these people. Look, listen to what they're saying, it's terrible. Moshe refused. And Moshe said, no, they're just Nevi'im. Halvai, all of the Jewish people would be Nevi'im. They did nothing wrong, there's no reason to punish them. Just one thought about this Aliyah is that we find many times in this Aliyah complaining. Complaining about the uncertainty of the Midbar, complaining about the food. So often, we have situations and we have so much bracha. The people in the Midbar, Hashem was guiding them. They had the man, they had everything that they needed. But they looked at the glass as half empty. And they saw all the things that they did not have. In life, we have to train ourselves to look at the glass as half full and to always see the bracha that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us in life. 